and hello YouTube, GS Man Smart here, and in today's video we're going to be teaching you what bleeds are, how you can take advantage of bleed markers in InDesign, how you can add them to your document, and how to export your documents to have bleeds so when you're printing, everything prints out perfectly. That's coming up next. Hey guys, GS Man Smart here. Today on a brand new video for Tutorials with GS, and welcome back to another video. Glad to have you. I think you'll find this video very helpful. If you haven't been new to the channel, new to my videos, I want to welcome you as well, and I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Plenty of other Adobe InDesign tutorials, editing tutorials, video editing, audio editing, image editing, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that post notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the most recent videos. So here I have a small little example uh, project that I created in like the last 15 minutes for this tutorial. It's just a small little example newspaper page where we have four different sections here. Now one thing that you'll see is uh, we do have a red line outside and this is our bleed guide. Now bleed guides are important because when you're printing from a printer after you've designed something in InDesign, you want to make sure that your design, your background, your images, they actually get printed to the edge of the paper if that's what you want. So if you want a specific uh, image to get printed all the way to the edge of a paper, you want to make sure that you have your image extending to and past, but more importantly to the red bleed guide. If you don't have that, there could be a chance that uh, when you're printing, there may be a small white line, which means that your pictures, your backgrounds did not get printed to the edge of the page like you wanted it to. And the reason why this happens is because sometimes printers will print on a page that is a, a slightly bigger than uh, the page we have here in InDesign. You want to make sure you always have a bleed guide. Now, if you already have a bleed guide, uh, depending on what type of printer you're using, some printers use three millimeters, other printers use 0.125 inches, whatever the case may be, you can always create your document before you do anything, before you do any designing, you can go to new document, you can always create a document and set up your bleeds from the get-go. So uh, still working in millimeters here, and if we go down to bleeds here, you may have to open this little section here, bleeds and slug, and you can go ahead and set your bleed amount. So if you have, for example, uh, you know, two millimeters, then you can set the two millimeters, you can, click, you can click this little chain icon, and it'll make all of them two millimeters. Then you can go ahead and press create, and you'll see that a new document is created with these bleed guides. Now say you created a document already, you have a design already, but you don't have any bleed guides and you want to add them. You can very easily do that. Go ahead and head to file, go down to document setup here, and then under bleed and slug, once again, you can uh, click the drop down here and it'll pop up. You can go ahead and set a bleed amount. The chain is here also, and you can press okay. So if you're already in the middle of your design, you forgot to add bleeds, you can always add them later on. So now the thing is that you wanna make sure all your images and all your backgrounds, everything that you want to extend to the edge of the page, you wanna make sure that it extends to this bleed marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this up like so, and same thing at the bottom here. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring this to my bleed, and we're just gonna go ahead and go to fitting, fit frame proportionately, and as you can see, that gives us uh, the bleeding. Now, if you press W on your key, you'll see that this does not affect how your document will be printed as. Uh, the bleed guides are actually outside of the document. This is just for the printer purposes. For your own design purposes, this is how it's going to look. We're going to do the exact same thing with these images here. We're going to go ahead and drag them to the edge here. Drag these to the edge here. And some people even like to extend them past the bleed just to be sh just to uh, make sure. So you can extend them past the bleed too. If you want, I've seen many designers uh, extend them past the bleed, and that isn't an uncommon practice. So sometimes when you have long images and they're slightly longer than your page, they just leave them like that because they know they're gonna have bleed markers anyway. And it's completely fine to drag them past the uh, bleed guides. So there we go. Uh, last one, and we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing, fit it to, uh, f to, to the frame. Now once we have that done, you'll see that all of our images 
are going across the delete guy but if you but if we press w you'll see that it actually looks pretty much the exact same the way it did before so that's how you add bleed guides to your document and why bleed guides are important now when you're exporting for print you want to go to file you want to go to export and you want to make sure that you select adobe pdf for print so here it is adobe pdf for print go ahead and select that uh, we can go ahead and press save that's fine it's called untitled and then here in this next pop-up quality you want to make sure that you have this set to a preset most people like to use high quality print which is just fine and the really important part is you want to head to marks and the bleeds here and you want to make sure you select use document bleed settings this is very important because if you don't select this the printer won't have any information about your bleed guide so you want to make sure you select this, this is very important now it is also optional to add to add crop marks some people like to have crop marks some people like to have all these marks which is just fine if you want to have them uh, it's not required though but i'll go and check mark them all real quick then we can go and press export and you'll see that when our document opens up in adobe acrobat here or in your pdf viewer or in chrome as you can see these little crop marks and bleeds at the bottom here show you uh, where your document we printed on you also have the marks at the top here if they are required if not you don't need to have these at the top this is just optional but when you print this you'll actually get the same result that you had here in indesign when you press w this is your preview this is what we printed it's just that for the printer the printer needs to know uh, your bleed guide it needs to know some other information up here sometimes so that's why marks and bleeds are sometimes important but don't worry too much about uh, all the extra information here it's just for the printer as you can see these crop lines right here this is actually what's going to be on your page if you were to draw an imaginary line across here from that crop line to the other crop line and from the top crop line all the way down to the, the bottom crop line that's telling you what's going to be on the page so that pretty much covers everything on bleeds and marks. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and leave a like on the video. We really appreciate it. Any further questions, further comments, suggestions, feedback, leave it in the comments section down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, once again, I encourage you to subscribe. Plenty of other helpful things on the channel. If you want to check out my most recent video, go ahead and click the annotation here. If you want to check out a similar video to this one, click the annotation here. If you want to subscribe to my gaming, my vlogging, my other channels, the annotation is here. And if you want to go ahead and donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can click the annotation here. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, this is GS Man with Smart. I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.